Greetings, folks. In this video, we're going to look at the maximum power transfer theorem. We start with a very simple circuit. I have a power source, a voltage source, an internal resistance, a source resistance, 100 ohms, and a load resistance, in this case also 100 ohms. The theorem basically says if you want the maximum amount of power in the load, this load resistance has to be the same as the internal source resistance. Any other value will get you less power. Now, if you think about this for a sec, it might make sense, it might make no sense, right? I mean, if you think of it in terms of V squared divided by R for power, you would say, oh, V squared divided by R, I want the biggest possible voltage here. That would imply a really huge resistance. But a really huge resistance would give you very little current. So if you thought of it in terms of I squared times R, you'd say, well, I want a lot of current, okay, because it's I squared. So to get a lot of current here, I want a really small resistor. But if you have a really small resistor, you get a lot of current, but no voltage. And of course, power is I times V. So once again, you're stuck. It turns out you need not the maximum voltage, not the maximum current, but basically half those values. So if you match these things, you'll get the biggest possible power. All right. So very quickly, we come in here and we say with the match, we get five volts. So five volts squared divided by 100 ohms, right? That's 25 divided by 100. Okay. So we get a quarter basically right there. Now, if I came in here and changed this to 10 ohms, so the voltage has gone down. We have about 9 tenths of a volt. You square that, that's only going to be around a little over 0.8. So again, you divide that by 10 and you know, you're looking at 80 some odd uh, milliwatts less, right? Less than what we had before. If we, on the other hand, increase this, now we get a nice big voltage, right? We get nine volts, a little over nine. Square that. So you're going to have a little over um, 81 squared volts, but now you're dividing it by a thousand ohms. And you're in the same exact boat you were with the little 10 ohm resistor. It just doesn't pan out, right? So you get the maximum amount of power. You want to match these two things, right? I want that 100 ohm resistor in here. Now, do you always want max power? No, because one of the problems that you have is you only have 50% efficiency. If this works out to, you know, a quarter of a watt, that would also imply there would have to be a quarter of a watt here. If these are matched, it's a series loop. Same current, same resistance, I squared times R. This power is the same as this power. So this represents only half of the total power that's generated from the source. So we only have 50% efficiency. That's not so good. Uh, if we were to decrease this resistance, the situation's even worse. Right? If I were to bring this down to 10 ohms, right, we already saw that the uh, uh, load power wouldn't be as high. Um, however, as a total power, it's even worse than 50% because, again, I squared times R, this resistance is 10 times the size. It's going to have 10 times the resistance, excuse me, 10 times the uh, power. So the end result is, you know, the efficiency on this thing is going to be sitting, you know, down below 10%. If we make it really big resistance, Power does go down, but the efficiency goes up because now this resistance is a lot bigger than our source and as a share of the total power, this goes up. So now we might be looking at 90% you know, efficiency. So in some applications, we're more concerned with the efficiency of the system than we are with achieving max power. It all depends on what the application is. And sometimes this can be a little deceiving. For example, if you think about an audio amplifier, you might think, well, I want to get as much power as I can uh, to the loudspeaker. But not really, 
because that means if you had maximum power transfer, half the power is going into heat in the amplifier itself. You're making the power transistors and so forth hot. What is the point in doing that, right? It's not a space heater, it's an amplifier. So we would actually prefer to have the internal impedance of the amplifier be a lot smaller than the load impedance. So, okay, we don't get maximum load power, but I do get much more efficiency. Um, this thing is going to run cooler. I draw less power from the wall and so on and so forth. Okay. All right. Now we have a little bit more than this. Okay. What I've got now is a little Python program that's going to do a little run for us on the um, maximum power transfer. So what we have up here are just a bunch of input statements. I'm going to ask for a voltage source, its internal resistance, and then we're going to look for a, uh, a starting resistance, an ending resistance, and then a factor, which we're going to multiply the start resistance by until we get up to the uh, stop value. So we're going to create a table that will show a whole bunch of resistors because I know what you're thinking. I just threw out, you know, a value 10 times bigger and a 10 times smaller and it just happens to work out to max power somewhere in the middle. But, you know, does it work for any resistor? Does it work at a factor of 1.1 uh, or 0.96 or, you know, whatever? Do I always get it at the match? So this is going to uh, sort of a brute force method of showing how this works. So the first thing we do, um, we just do a little logical check here to make sure that somebody doesn't put in a crazy value for R factor. Um, and we calculate the maximum power, right? So this should be half the total voltage squared divided by the internal resistance. That's the biggest we're going to get according to the theorem. Then we come through here and we simply calculate using uh, voltage divider rule, the load voltage, calculate P load, V squared divided by R load, calculate P total, right, which is the supplied voltage squared divided by the total resistance, take the ratio, find out what the efficiency is. Remember we said we get 50% efficiency uh, at the um, uh, match case, at the max power case. If we go above that, if we go for a higher load resistance, we'll actually wind up with uh, greater efficiency, although we do have less power. And then we're just going to, um, you know, uh, print these things out, okay? So let's run this. So you can, you know, put in this program yourself and try this with different values. So I'm just going to come over here and say, you know, let's put in 10 volts. Um, I'll just put in 10 ohms for the source resistance and the initial load resistance. So let's try something small like an ohm and then um, a final value. Let's make it 10 times. So I'm going to look at the span in between. Okay, and an increment factor of maybe 1.1. So this will give us a bunch of values. All right, so right here at the bottom, there's 2.5 watts at 10 ohms. I'm going to scroll up here a little bit, and you can see what's happening. Here's my R load, there's the P load, here's the efficiency. So down here at an ohm, you know, there's the uh, 800 milliwatts or so that we're getting. It's uh, about 9% efficient. And as we work this up, now, this doesn't happen to hit exactly on 10 ohms, but we're just shy of it here at 9.85, just about. And we can see we're just shy of the 2.5, okay, the 2.5 watts, just shy of the 50%. And once we hit this, it goes the other way, right? The power starts to drop off as R increases, although the efficiency does increase, right? So we can see this um, resistors going up here. The uh, efficiency and finally winds up around um, 90%. But again, we're back at a lower power. So we can we can try this with different values. And if you want to rerun it, um, you know, let's say we do, uh, I'll keep the 10 volts, but may, you know, maybe we'll do a source resistance of uh, 100 ohms this time, as we had originally. And maybe we'll narrow it up a little bit. Okay, so... Um, Maybe I'll just do like a factor of two on either side. Okay, so I'll do 50 ohms down there. Maybe the final resistance will be 200 ohms. And, um, you know, maybe we'll do uh, like one point, uh, I don't know, five, zero five or something like that. 
what do we get? Okay, so our peak power should be a quarter watt that we were talking about. Um, again, here's right around that value. So there's our you know, 0.24999, just about 50%. And we can just you know, redo this with other values, but you're always going to see that occur. You're always going to see that uh, peak right when the two things are matched. All right, so that works out um, very nicely. It's very handy to use this with Thevenin's theorem because uh, Thevenin's theorem is going to take a, a complicated circuit and reduce it down into just a voltage source and a series resistance, which is exactly what we want for our maximum power. So I could have a very complicated circuit and, and ask the question, what load gets me max power? Or at what point do I start to get increases in efficiency above 50%? I can thevenize that circuit, come up with a simplified resistor and, and uh, uh, resistor, uh, voltage source and resistor, thevenin, and use the thevenin value then against my load. Right? That simplifies things very, very nicely.